Pollutants in the air can make it tough for you to breathe and function, but pollutants can also affect your car's performance. It's the reason an air filter is standard equipment on internal combustion engines. The filter keeps dirt and particles out of the engine so it runs smoothly and gives good mileage. Hmm, I wonder if that works for people. Trapping dust and grime is a dirty job, and it takes its toll. Air filters get clogged and have to be replaced regularly, so we need a steady supply. To make an air filter, an automated spool unwinds thick paper and feeds it between two rollers. Bumps on the rollers press indentations into the paper. The short vertical ones are spacers to help air flow through the filter. The long horizontal lines are the pre-fold creases. The rollers fold the paper along those lines as they push it out the other side. An automated counter keeps track of the folds because each filter will need to have approximately 75 pleats. Now a conveyor belt moves the paper to a circular blade. A steel bar holds the paper pack down while the blade slides on a motorized rail, slicing the paper at the correct number of folds. The paper pack rolls down the conveyor belt, heading to the next station. In the meantime, a robotic arm sprays liquid wax onto the aluminum molds that will be used to shape the tops and bottoms of the filters. The carousel turns, positioning another set for spraying. The wax will ensure that nothing sticks to the molds during the next steps. Now chrome-plated steel screens fall into a positioning tray. A robot picks them up with magnets, two at a time. It places them on the bottom mold for the filter. A platen or plate bearing two top molds flips forward on the carousel. The carousel turns, and remember the paper packs? A worker places one in each of those top molds. Now a robot dispenses a liquid polyurethane mixture around the screen in the bottom mold. Then the automated platen flips back so that the top molds with the paper packs face down. An air cylinder pushes a platen holding the bottom molds up to meet the top ones, and heat triggers this chemical reaction. The polyurethane swells and covers the screen and the paper pack, forming a solid, flexible plastic layer. A robot with grippers peels the new air filter out of the mold and sets it on a cooling rack. Because of the wax sprayed on the molds, the robots don't have to work hard to pull the air filters out. Like well-greased cookie sheets, nothing gets stuck to the bottom. After they're cooled, the rack tips up and the air filters tumble down a slide to a worker who collects each one. With a band saw, she trims the excess polyurethane, or flash, from the rim. Now all that's left is the packaging. On another assembly line, a robot prepares to make a radial seal type of filter. It sprays the no-stick wax onto the brims of molds that look like inverted top hats. A small wheel turns and delivers the molds to a larger assembly wheel. Another robot picks up plastic caps and places them inside the molds. Then, a nomadic pusher raises the caps and nozzles dispense a hot glue bead onto their edges. Another pneumatic pusher tool forces round packs of pleated paper out of cylindrical holders and into the molds. The big wheel keeps on turning, positioning the molds to receive more packs, or tubes, of filter paper. The wheel pushes the paper-filled molds onto a conveyor belt. And down the line, a robot pumps a polyurethane mix into the bottom mold for the filter. A worker presses the paper-filled top mold onto it. Heat triggers the chemical reaction that expands the polyurethane, encasing the bottom of the filter paper and forming a gasket that will fit tightly near an engine intake. The radial air filter is now completely assembled, and it's taken just 20 minutes. The filters are now ready to do some dirty work under the hood.